Okay, so uh, we solved the, the problem uh, of, um, of, the, of the access of the database thanks to we solved. Okay, we are we already knew that. Okay, so uh, we started with this code that was a, a basic asynchronous code, and uh, we reorganized it by using uh, promises and uh, await uh, um, instructions so that it will be easier to use basically. Um, we will have problem um, applications where the core of the execution is asynchronous, but uh, so-called, let's say the outer layers, the main layers uh, will be synchronized if we need, when we need them using these await uh, instructions. Um, maybe one detail about the, the, the execution model of JavaScript, uh, away is not, uh, Let's say it's suspending this function, but it's not blocking the application. So when a function is in the await state, other uh, functions may, may, may continue to execute. So it's not wasting the CPU time uh, in, in any case. Okay, so don't, uh, don't be afraid. Uh, it's not a polling that uh, just checks and waits. Um, okay, in, in the slides you find uh, uh, more or less uh, other versions of these examples uh, uh, but uh, actually the same kind of code that we wrote together and uh, um, but my uh, the last slides in the in this chapter is some pointers contain some pointers uh, to um, other other libraries um, sqlite 3 is the library that we've been using up to now for accessing sqlite and so uh basically it uses uh, callbacks uh, for all the queries there have been a number of evolutions uh, other people that uh, started to create maybe more uh, promise friendly libraries um, for example we have this uh, sqlite uh, just remember sqlite without the tree or sqlite async they are both other libraries uh, that you could install in addition to SQLite 3, uh, that gives you uh, an API made with promises. So if you want, uh, uh, you can create your own uh, promises uh, on SQLite like we did today. Or if you want, you can have a look at these libraries and, uh, and, and use already the promises that are returning this library. So in, in some way, they are doing the work that we are doing by hand, so it's nothing new. There is, they, are, they, are, they have a slightly different uh, um, interface, of course, because they are using promises, but you are free to use the library you want. And uh, there's also some other uh, people that, uh, uh, for example, this guy uh, that created this better SQLite tree that was uh, synchronous. So it's saying, okay, um, uh, don't worry about trying to make synchronous things right. Actually, SQLite 3 is a, is a C code that runs onto a local file that is cached in memory. So probably all this asynchronous stuff is not needed. And so he made a synchronous version of the APIs. And it says it's faster. But anyway, um, everybody is, uh, is proud of the library, of the module that they did. Um, there are many, many um, variants okay but the, the key all of them basically rely on this sqlite 3 and then there are extensions that uh, you may like more or less uh, you know, from the programming style point of view you, you may choose hmm? um for a couple of questions saying that uh, carlo and alessio are asking more or less the same question uh await uh, um First, a weight at the, in the global area cannot be uh, used because a weight must be inside an asynchronous function. Uh, in, in the ES6 module, uh, the, the module itself will be asynchronous. So actually mm, can, cannot be used. But in any case, a weight does not uh, block the execution of the program. It will only suspend the execution of the function. Okay, so when I'm here, uh, the function will, uh, maybe this function has uh, 10 lines to be executed. I will execute the first three or four, and then I hit an await instruction. This function is put aside, 
and the CPU is devoted to running other functions that may be able to run. When the promise on which we are blocked will be resolved, this function will be eligible to run again. And so we'll execute from actually from here to there to the next await and so on. So while a function is in await, um, that function will not consume any resources, any CPU resources. Okay, and these CPU resources may be used to execute other all the other callbacks or all the other functions, asynchronous functions that are waiting uh, for a chance to be executed. So it's, it's a way of collaborative multitasking. When a function ends or when a function awaits, other functions can execute. Uh, it the final the, the elapsed time will be longer just because there will be more time spent in in idle in time where other functions could be executing, but our CPU load would be in this case will be lower because we are <coughs> setting some synchronization points. But for now, for our example, the synchronization is uh, necessary to get the right result. Um, okay. Slide 52, let me go back to slide 52. You are asking uh, uh, if it's possible that the finally callback is executed before one of the other callbacks. No, by definition, callback uh, finally will always be lay, um, executed the, uh, as the last uh, possible callback. Um, the semantics of, of finally is just uh, it's just that. So uh, you are sure that all the all the dance uh, it will be executed after the last uh, promise has been resolved or rejected. So they will be execute the result and then the finally or the reject and then the final. Hmm? Uh, okay. So maybe we can make some exercise. And uh, uh, the idea is to build a, uh, on top or a, a, a variant of the exercise that we started last week uh, of the where we use it for basically playing with uh, uh, arrays and uh, functional methods. And here we're trying to implement some functionalities uh, using the databases on the same type of data. Um, with the exams and exam lists and so on. Okay. Um, the idea is uh, to, <coughs> sorry, define some functions that uh, return promises, because these functions will operate into uh, onto a, a database. So imagine that we have a database that contains the courses and exams, uh, and uh, of course we are taking the chance of uh, where is that of uh, um, making it uh, according to the relational model. I have two tables, uh, the table of courses that contains for every course, uh, the code, the name and, and the credits. And uh, the second table would contain uh, only the scores. And uh, we have the course code, uh, the score, the, the honors, yes or not, and a date when uh, it was passed. Okay, uh, I can give you a copy if you want to follow along a copy of the database in the chat so that if you want, you can have a copy on your project and not have to create it by hand. Um, this will be, there's already some, some data preloaded uh, to, to help us uh, uh, work. Okay, so you just have to copy that into, into your project. And let's start to see you know, how, um, how we can uh, organize uh, um, our work here. I, I will say some, some words about dates. Thanks, Giovanni, for the, for the hint. OK, so um, well, let, let's start from here, dates. Uh, dates are a complex uh, uh, beast, and uh, in a because uh, we need to first understand how to manage dates in SQLite and how to handle dates in, in JavaScript, okay? Uh, SQLite has a very peculiar way 
of dealing uh, with dates. And uh, I don't know if I can get the first uh, try. This page from SQLite, uh, but it's not. Uh, sorry. Uh, no, it's not the page I had in mind. Documentation. Mm. So that's a tiles here. Okay. Uh, in SQLite, uh, you can represent dates or times uh, in three different ways. Okay, there is no, uh, dif uh, differently from other real databases, in SQLite we don't have the date or date time uh, data type, okay, or timestamp like we do in normal uh, SQL. SQL. Uh, you can represent uh, date in three different ways. You can represent them as strings uh, in the ISO format, so year, month, day, hour, minute, seconds uh, as a string. And you can store the strings uh, and all the date function in MySQL, uh, sorry, in SQLite will understand this notation and will uh, uh, work uh, correctly. You can represent them as integer numbers, uh, as unique time, so the number of seconds, second, not milliseconds, beware, uh, since the, the epoch, so the first of January of uh, 1970. So you can choose when you create your database whether to devote a, a a string column or an integral column to store in the date. And then, of course, you need to be consistent. So when you store something, you need to store it in the ISO format or in the Unix time format as a number. Um, there's also a real representation, but I really don't like it because the number of days since the 4,000 before Christ, uh, okay, uh, I don't want to do these computations. Okay, so it's not, uh, I wouldn't suggest that. Um, so these are text and, and real, uh, uh, text and integer are two different ways of storing the same information. And basically they are about the time instance. Okay, so they are, they set a time instant. So it's not really a date, but it's a combination of date and time. It's a millisecond actually. And in SQLite, you can use all these uh, functions uh, to, uh, to format, to extract, uh, and to do some computations uh, uh, about uh, uh, the, um, this kind of dates. So you can create, for example, uh, uh, with the concept of date, you can do some computation like uh, from now you go to the start of a month uh, and add one month and subtract one day. That's a sort of arithmetic. It's not standard SQL, uh, SQL uh, syntax. Uh, it's a very peculiar syntax. But uh, um, for example, uh, we can have the computation, the conversion from from Unix dates uh, to ISO dates and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so there's some some functions that work uh, with dates in SQLite. Uh, just be aware that they are not uh, aligned with the SQL standard. So if you do that, uh, uh, just check this documentation. Not the, don't rely on the standard uh, um, on the standard documentation. Okay. Uh, okay, this for um, SQLite. And what happens on the on JavaScript side? Okay, how do we represent uh, dates in JavaScript? So this prompts me to open an old file where we are dealing with the functions. And uh, let me just say a few words about dates in JavaScript. See this for the slides uh, 102. Uh, the chapter on uh, on objects and functions. Um, basically, the uh, JavaScript uh, library has a date type, a date object. So, like it has an, an array of um, object type, it has a string object type. It also has a date object type that uh, encodes the numbers uh, uh, in, uh, in milliseconds uh, from the epoch for the January 1st, 1970. Um, and it, uh, it works uh, in local time, so according to your computer. And this working in local time could be a problem in a web application, for, of course, because you don't know 
your the browsers of your users in which time zone they are uh, the problem is that uh, these uh, uh, data objects have a lot of problems okay first of all uh, formatting is local dependent so if you have a program that runs in italy and another pro the same program that runs uh, I don't know in the united states will print dates differently according to the local conventions and it's very nice when you're trying to process the strings and you what you get is uh, really complex um you it will parse dates uh, in, uh, in in strange ways uh, so for example if the date is in iso format uh, uh like here it will parse it uh, correctly to the midnight of that date Okay, but if I try to write the same data with another syntax, which is allowed, which is the long syntax, it will be interpreted as the local time. And uh, so the midnight of the local time, which, which will be 11 in the night of the day before. So if you just leave out the time zone or leave out the, the hour, you can get something which is on the day before, on the day after. And, um, and also comparisons are difficult because uh, you see that I try to specify a date, but what actually gets stored is a combination of date and time. So if I should always remember to put zero minutes and seconds when I'm comparing two dates, because it may happen that one day. So I cannot compare this to now, for example, because now will contain date and time components. So before doing the comparison, I should put to zero all the fields, uh, the month, the day, the hour, the minutes that I really don't want to compare. So it's a very low level uh, library with a lot of problems. So our suggestion is not to use the, the, the predefined date library. There are uh, several <clears throat> other libraries that deal with dates and they are all well maintained basically, or may, maybe they're maintained by a group of two people, but because, uh, they are um, widely used. <clears throat> and these are the, 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 the links to the, the ones that are you know, most frequently used. Uh, more or less they are the same functionality we have been using this uh, as an example i'll be using this day.js library uh, also looks on and also moment uh, moment uh, was very used uh, in in the in the past but also currently and it was very complete the only problem of moment that it got uh, it got uh, shamed by by google uh, basically uh, into the google chrome developer tools uh, they added a new tool for showing the, you the size of the libraries that you loaded. And it, it happened that the moment library was huge, was very large. And so uh, Chrome started to, to spit out warnings like you're using a, a large library, you're consuming a lot of, uh, uh, of bandwidth and resources, and you're slowing down your application and so on. So the developers of moments just say, okay, you, if you don't like our libraries, you will stop uh, development uh, on it. And there are uh, other alternatives that are uh, lighter and, and more or less, uh, more or less uh, have the same functionality. So DayJS is a guy that started re-implementing the same API of moment, uh, which is very famous. And uh, with a much, much smaller code base uh, based on many different modules that you can load only what you, what you need. Uh, Luxon is also an alternative that was developed by the same guys that uh, developed uh, Moment. So it's a, a new start uh, with a new type of library. And um, if any of you uh, know the java.time library in, in Java, Luxon is very similar in terms of philosophy. And date functions also is a set of functions over the native data type. So uh, they're trying to uh, use the native JavaScript data, but provide you with a set of functions that don't have all the problems of the native library. Anyway, all of them are good. Uh, they're good at bad points. Uh, we are trying to use DayJS, which is uh, uh, very small. So the, the core is just two kilobytes compared to to, uh, to Moment, for example, but there, the, the API is, is compatible. It works in the same way in Node and in the browser. And the very key point is that all objects are immutable. So whenever you create a date object, a date.js object, basically, uh, you cannot change this object. You can only create new objects derived from that. Okay. 
So it's a very safe programming model and it's very compatible with functional programming where you get a value, you modify it and you get a new value with some modified attributes. And um, so basically if, if we want to work with dates, uh, we can install in our library also the date.js module and import that in our, uh, in our code. And, uh, and instead of creating date objects, we will be creating date.js objects. The JS is the constructor function that by default will give me the time of now, date and time of now, but of course you can uh, use the JS to create uh, uh, with many different formats. Uh, so create from an ISO date and time, from an ISO only date uh, with or without the dashes, uh, from a, a date object uh, or for a Unix uh, timestamp and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and for parsing. And for uh, displaying, you have a format method that by default will use the full ISO format. And this would be also compatible with the with SQLite where you can store this, store this information. Or you can describe with a format string uh, um, the format in which you want to print the, the, the date. So you can extract the different components uh, uh, with the format method. There is also a, a two string method that defaults to the format <clears throat> used by the old date object, but uh, usually we want to choose our own form. Okay, so for machine readable, we use the ISO format for reading and writing, and for human readable dates, uh, we can choose our own format with the with this instruction with this method. Um, and then, of course, we have. Uh, methods for extracting and modifying date or time components so for example um, date is a field that specified the date of the month okay so if now is today now the date 15 is a new so today would be the the 11th of march date 15 uh, means that I'm changing the day of the month and so we'll, I will create the 15th of March 2021. I'm not modifying the now object, I'm because it's immutable, I'm creating a new object with that field modified according to what I wanted to do. So it became 15th of March instead of uh, uh, whatever it was when, when I created this slide. Hmm? Uh, because I changed this property. I can use the date or I can use a set method uh, by specifying the, the temporal unit. All, these are all the supported temporal unit that we can read or modify. If we use the method without a parameter, we are reading, extracting the value. If we are calling the method with a parameter, we are setting the value. So it's very direct to, to extract this information. And uh, um, there are a lot of um, methods also for doing arithmetic with dates okay we can add or subtract uh, some units for example add one day so add or subtract also uh, get a value and a unit of measure or start of month or end of day uh, difference between two dates expressed in seconds or expressed in months for example uh, um, or we can do all the comparisons like the one date is before, same of after, one date is between two other dates and so on. So all the basic operations are already provided by these functions and uh, uh, always use the provided functions to do all date arithmetic because even computing the date of tomorrow by hand, by adding days and, and counting months uh, will, uh, will be buggy. So. Uh, because there's a lot of special cases according to the time, according to the leap years and whatever. So we have the, all the function to do a sane and correct arithmetic over the dates. Uh, I, 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 I never want to see anybody checking whether the current, uh, whether tomorrow is the same month or not. So if uh, the day is greater than 30, then increase the month. Don't do that. Don't put yourself into that problem. Always use the the function that the library is providing you. And uh, some, many functions are already predefined, uh, but many others are in so-called plugins. So DJS only gives you the core functionality, but there's a lot uh, 
of uh, uh, other mm, you know uh, plugins that you can load so let's say day.js.org it's uh, minimal but uh, if you have a look uh, at the plugins uh, you, uh, you have a lot of plugins here that we add uh, some methods or are some uh, uh, some functions uh, uh, so that if you need them if you need those uh, so the, the core is very minimal but if you need all of those uh, you can add them very easily by uh, by using the, an, an extra require that will load the plugin into the plugin is already installed with the module but it's not loaded you just have to load it and then you can use uh, uh, register the plugin with the library and then you can use this like extra function so that's uh, um, that's uh, quite easy hmm? uh, okay but if you want uh, there are other other topics that, that, that you can find the documentation my message here is just we will use this day.js uh, uh, library and uh, the the, um, the representation of dates in the database will be iso strings and, or any computation we do will be with objects and when you store them in javascript we use uh, uh, day.js objects and not not strings strings will be used to to print or to store data into the database or to transfer them or over the wire or in json when of course we don't have objects but internally we'll try to use objects so that we can actually have all the arithmetics available for us if we define the JS, it's set 24 to 23. Um, uh, no, because it's uh, it, it, oh, okay. Yes, this is what is. Well, let's try it interactively so that uh, so we, we have to install it anyway. So let's open the terminal and uh, npm install. Uh, the JS. Okay. Let's see interactively. Day JS. JS require JS. Okay. So I can do let now the JS give me today's so, so i now the format will print uh, now's time so 1104 which is our local time so it's if i have a look at the object you see that the the date is actually stored in uh, utc time you see that z is in, means 10 for uh, universal uh, time and so actually stored at 1004 universal time but when i'm so this is the in, a real field inside the object but i'm trying if i try to convert it with format it will convert it into uh, our local time okay so uh, from the question of marco uh, what does it do when it passes the date uh, um it depends on the on the which local zone you want to see the result so if you call this number if you execute this instruction that you are suggesting so not this one sorry uh data yeah i copy it by hand marco is data yes of uh, uh, 2019 125 okay, marco actually is available that uh, is set to the 11 o'clock on the 24th but when i print it uh, it will return me uh, the midnight of the 25 okay so it doesn't make confusion between it between the local time and the uh, universal time like the initial date object uh, only uh didn't have the the, um, the time zone explicit so it did some operations in the local time and some operation in the universal time in this case we uh, everything will be converted from and back the local time 
if you need to do other conversions uh, you know manually you can do that with uh, there are some time zone conversion there's a plugin that gives you all the conversions that you need mm -hmm. um okay and so also, uh, also for us if we are storing something in the database with format uh, we are storing that in local time for example mm -hmm. okay uh, this was a Parentheses over dates, but of course we need them uh, here in the exercise because, uh, uh, for example, we want to uh, for example, uh, add or get uh, all the exam lists and let's just uh, start uh, the, the program is implement one, one or two methods with everything we know uh, up to now. Okay. So let's open a new file. Courses uh, DB. Let's call it. Okay. So uh, we have to require the um, SQLite. SQLite is require SQLite three. We have to require the JS. Remember that I can require module if I have installed it with npm in the same in the same uh, folder in the same project. So it went into packet.json and now has also the JS and SQLite three. You see as dependencies into the packet.json. Okay. Uh, we can open the, the uh, database const db is a uh, new sqlite dot database with the name uh, exams and with a callback that we hope it never fires the error message and close the program okay so um right now we we may start for example with the method uh, get all that returns uh, an exam list with all the exams for example mm -hmm. so we define a function get all that doesn't require any parameter and uh, at this time we should return this uh, um, list exam list with all the exams we can reuse uh, the function that we developed uh, last time remember the last time we had um, an exam constructor function so just copying the code over later on we learn how to use modules for doing that okay so we have uh, uh sorry about indentation okay let's close this for a moment so that we have more space for the code okay so we have a constructor function for for an exam and a constructor function for the exam list where we don't need to copy everything but the add method yes at least the add method And the and the two string method for printing it. Uh, yes, thanks, Claudio. I'm missing an if. Okay. So right now we can go to the get all uh, function and we can use the, the same pattern that we used in the in the exercise before first we need to uh, get all the exams uh, exam list okay the exam list uh, is a different because we have code name cfu score honors and date passed in the in the exam object but the database is organized a bit differently because we have courses separate from scores so we must join them 
in order to have a full list of exams with all the data code. Okay, code is taken from here, name is taken from here, CFU is taken from there, but then score, honors, and date are taken from, from the other uh, table, where there may be or may not be a corresponding exam. So we could uh, uh, create, uh, where, sorry, okay. Okay, you can create, a, um, sorry, I don't, I'm not sure if I can increase the font here. So uh, it will be something like select, uh, or if I general uh, look and feel fonts, okay. Okay. Uh, we can select uh, everything from course, or maybe let's be too explicit code course dot um, name course dot cfu and then code and uh, also score and we may we may we must do a left join because not all of them are connected with score on on the, the the joining is scores dot code equal to score dot uh, course code and so we can add at this point also the score on the score table we can add the, the course code is already there the score or dot uh, dot uh, load uh, the honors and finally or dot uh, date test. So let's maybe break it down in a more readable way. Hmm? So this should be the query that we want to execute, probably. Uh, exams, uh, no, there's no such table code, no, course dot, no. such table code, ah, so not from code, so for course. Okay, and uh, let's run it again. Where's the run button? Okay, so you have something like this uh, with all the courses and uh, the information about the exam passed uh, when you passed it, otherwise it will be null. Now, um, Bianca, uh, the where clause is not equivalent from to the left join. Uh, because a where clause will, will be false when some value is null. Okay, so if you uh, implement this with a where instead of, of, of a left join, what you will get uh, would be um, um, only this line. No, will be only this line uh, because the, in the other cases we are you are making a where with uh, one of the two nulls. So the left join will explicitly say. From the left table, I want all the data. From the right one, I only want those that match this criteria. Okay, so it's a, it's not structured, but uh, it's it's compatible with what we need. Okay, this is our query, which doesn't have any parameters, and we can create uh, put that into our get all function. I'm using the backtick uh, uh, syntax for strings so that they can write a string over many lines without uh, making it more, more or less readable. Hmm? And, uh, uh, and now we can 
create the promise that will uh, run the query okay so return new promise and now exactly as before resolve reject then do all the code remember we are doing a return so nothing can be later no, nothing can be written after this statement um we must run the query so db dot all from this sql string and we have the callback the sqlite callback so error rows and inside the callback uh we can check if we have an error then reject with the error man we had the error object as and uh, uh as uh, we need to return uh an exam list uh, uh object okay so here we have to con to create an exam list and return it so we have to uh, create a list, a new exam list. And then we are going to use the add method of the exam list to uh, populate it. And finally, we will uh, resolve with the exam list. So we are resolving a, a full object, <clears throat> not just a number. And inside, uh, we iterate for row of rows. We iterate over the rows. And for every row, we can create a new object uh, exam as a new exam. Where the parameters are taking so the parameter or the constructor are taken from uh, the query. So code is row.code. The second parameter is name, row.name. The CFU is row.cfu. Uh, and if we want, we could convert it to, to integers here because uh, it probably will be a string uh the score again row dot score so we are using here the names of the of the query of the select statement the score then the next field will be uh, the honors so uh, rows dot loud and uh, the date test would be a day js object constructed from the row dot date test so or from the database we are getting the string but for storing that into an object we are converting it to an object to, to do easier arithmetic with that and once we have this we can add it to the list list dot add row Uh, I'm 43. Thank you. Shouldn't we add exam? Yes, we should add exam. Thank you. And finally, so this is the, if it works, uh, is the implementation of get all. If we want to try it, we can uh, build the main function async function main and then let uh, uh, list await uh, get all and finally List. and then we call the name. OK, 
Okay. Cross your fingers. Sorry. Okay. So it printed, of course, the, the structure of the object, exam list. Maybe we I add a, a two string method to make it nicer. Yeah. So uh, there's something still to be printed well because information uh, in this case num the score is 25. It doesn't print the owners, for example, and the date passed is this one. You see, it's printed in the, with the two-string method, probably because the two-string for the date paste is just using two-string, and we probably we need to convert them using the format. Okay, so maybe the format better because it's a JS object, so we can do that. Okay, maybe format. We can also give the format string. Uh, year or maybe in Italian way day month uh, year okay so it's easy to work with objects rather than strings if you had them as strings so converting it like that uh, would have been a nightmare of substring and concatenation and um, of course this should now check whether the these fields are available or not or they are now there's still some aesthetics to polish okay but the idea is uh, we have a synchronous code and in the main we are dealing with that synchronously. Um, Vincenzo, I not understood that we treat the resolve and reject. We don't pass any callback function to the async functions promise. Uh, the Since we are using await, await itself is uh, waiting for the resolve and reject. So when we resolve, await will deliver the result to the expression where await is shown is written okay so the result of await will be whatever i resolve if i reject then i will get an exception in this line so i can try and catch the exception or the program will stop uh, resolve will just be a return of the parameter it looks like that. Really, the resolve will call a sort of a then method that will then unblock this function and return the value. Okay, so we can we can think of that, but always everything is uh, asynchronous with promise. Just we are waiting for all the promise to finish, and await will wait will wait for us. Will implement the then mechanism for us, the catch mechanism for us, all hidden in this sim simple keyword. Okay, so we can still pretend to be thinking synchronously while the code is really asynchronous. Okay. Um, so we still have uh, five minutes. Uh, so let me, I see that some of you are writing. So I wait for any questions and uh, I will spend some time uh, talking about the labs on Monday that we start. The first two labs uh, um, will be normal labs. So the big labs will start uh, at the end of the, uh, sorry, after the Easter vacations. So we have two normal labs and then we will start the, the four weeks of the, the, the big labs after Easter vacation. So we still have some time to settle up and, and to become more familiar, okay? Um, so for these labs, uh, working groups is still not mandatory, even if maybe it's better if you start working together. Um, uh, how we organize the work? There are there will be three uh, groups, three slots. Okay, let me maybe open uh, an empty file with some notes. Okay, so there will be uh, and, and, um, three, three slots. And for each slot, uh, a different Zoom call for each slot. 
Okay, so we will publish the links. They will not, we will not use the links for the lecture because we want three separate links so that if one turn, if maybe somebody discussing something in the first group, in the first lot, and then the second lot may start even if the first one is not already closed. If we are everybody in the same link, it will create problems. Uh, there are different uh, teachers in the three slots. So that may, may uh, they also may overlap. Uh, in every slot, uh, we have uh, several rooms uh, in each slot, one per group. So that uh, you will enter the Zoom call and then you will join one room depending on your group. Inside the room, the room, you are free, meaning that you can talk to each other, you can have the cam, you can open the camera, you can open the mic, you can share the screen. You are just working like you are in a private call, basically. So inside the room, you have a private call, but the chat is global. So you may ask for help in the chat, and a teacher will visit you. So you start working. If you have some question or some problem, you can uh, chat uh, in room 17, we have a problem. And the, the, the teacher or the student uh, that will help us will come to your room and, and chat with you and discuss with you very, very informally. OK, so it's a, a small group. Uh, it's very informal. It's not like a lecture with uh, 120 people or 106 people like, like in this moment. OK. Um, or if if uh, no, nobody asks us question, we can visit uh, this room just to uh, just to pick and say, okay, is everything going okay, or, or uh, something like that. Okay, uh, but basically, it's a space where you can work, and when we can very quickly come and also see your code because maybe you can share your screen or whatever. Um, about the mapping, which is the critical part of groups of slots. I'm making a social experiment. Let's say we call them a social experiment. Let's try to uh, organize a, you know, a free organization, let's say. Uh, not totally free, but, but uh, I would like to, uh, you to, for example, I will share you a document like this where I have the different uh, slots and uh, a number of rooms. So yesterday we had 49 groups, probably somebody um, was added uh, in the last hours. And so you just have to copy the name of your group into one of the slots. Okay. And uh, we will add slots if the, if the, the groups uh, are increased uh, with some margin, maybe one or two groups of Slack. Of Slack. Uh, try to uh, distribute yourself evenly across the different groups. So, okay, we are trying to uh, increase the number of rooms, uh, but uh, we cannot increase the number of people that assist you. So if one, um, if one slot uh, has too many groups, uh, it will be very difficult for us to assist you. So my idea is that I will share with you this document uh, and you are free to position your group, uh, just write a group name into the slot, uh, position your group when, when you want. And this will also be the room, the number of the room where you're going into because uh, Zoom only assigns numbers to the rooms. So if you are, if your group, uh, my, uh, the best uh, group uh, goes here, it knows that they, they, they will connect at 2.30 and they will enter room seven. Okay. Uh, I, I'm trusting you that you don't delete or overwrite your colleagues' uh, names and groups uh, because that would be stupid. <laughs> and uh, we don't, I think we don't need to do uh, to uh, apply any sort of ex extra external control to this process. Okay. Um, uh, scrolling down, but oh, I, I will update the list, but never don't 
don't don't care if you are just up, um, uploaded the group composition you just write your name here these are just the names of the groups that uh, i i uh, i copied yesterday evening <coughs> sorry so if you have any other courses that is uh, over yours uh, with the same schedule just try to 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 select another slot okay um the lab will be on monday every monday from now until the end of the course uh, carlo can we use our software to talk to each other in the team and just the global chat to ask questions you are free to do whatever you want but if uh, you are working in the zoom room uh, it will be very quick for us uh, not just to answer to the question in chat uh, because many times when you are in the lab uh, we need to see the code no? we need to share the code in this point uh, and asking questions in the chat will be um, more more, much more cumbersome so the idea is that you are there uh, you are free we, we are not checking you we are not controlling you you are free to work as a group and also tell jokes or bad words about, about the teachers whatever you want and uh, but if we need uh, we can have the full access to what you are doing hmm? that's the idea but of course you are free to to also use other means but that would mean that answering a lab question over a chat is very very difficult because how can we know what we are doing in the moment hmm? um, when the slot selection will be available right now give me 10 minutes uh, to finish the the, the, the class and uh, to share the link hmm? uh, and i will update also the list of the groups uh, up to the la latest version now and but of course you still have time until sunday right to create new groups uh, and so we will add uh, new rows. So please don't add rows if there's no need. I will be the one to add rows when I see that is being over full and uh, uh, try to occupy the slots that are there. Okay. Okay, so I, I'm sharing this uh, uh, in, the, in the next uh, 30 minutes. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, uh, there's still the, um, the Slack group uh, working also outside the hours. Uh, of, uh, of the lab so if you have questions about the lab uh, you can do that somebody could detect uh, also the, the the uri okay no problem okay so if there are no further questions i thank you for today and uh, we we will meet uh, on next uh, thursday uh, I will probably share on, on these days uh, uh, short videos about the web architectures. Now it's something very easy to understand, uh, so maybe I don't want to, you know, spend uh, too much time with you on, on easy stuff or stuff that's just knowledge. And so instead of spending time during the classes, uh, I will share you a video. It will be less than one hour. Nothing, nothing, nothing difficult or nothing longer uh, to have a look uh, before next uh, um, next next um, Thursday. Okay, so don't uh, fire me if I'm giving you, uh, to you some extra material, but it's just to have more time to work together on the examples, on the exercises during the classes. Okay, I have nothing more to tell you. I will show, uh, share the link in a moment. So bye bye and thank you. <laughs>